Hey everyone, it's Rita Peterson with Everything Homemade. I am going to talk about how to choose your milk cow, what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And by the time you're done watching this video, I hope that you will have all the tools you need and all the information you need to make a confident purchase on your very first milk cow. I would also like to mention that I am an author so if you like fiction definitely check out my books at the end of this video. All the books are available online for purchase through Amazon. So let's just dive right in. I'm really hoping that this video is short and precise and that I cannot ramble on because I'm talking about a topic that I love. I love my cows and therefore I sometimes can't wander off topic. So I'm really hoping that I can just streamline this to stay on topic. I have been milking for five years now. I started completely green. So I had zero experience milking a cow and everything surrounding it. So let's just start with breeds. You know what, in my personal opinion, some of you may definitely disagree with me, but that is okay. This is, I am passing what I have learned and what I think makes a good milk cow. There is definitely different opinions out there and I do respect that. So if you don't agree with me, that is okay. In my personal opinion, getting a mixed breed milk cow is better than a purebred milk cow. And this is going examples like dogs. In my opinion, it's better to go mixed breed than purebred. This goes with chickens mixed instead of pure and so forth and so on. And with that, you have less health problems. I find it, talking to owners with purebred jerseys, for example, there's a ton of problems like milk fever and many others. I won't go in detail, but you suddenly start having issues with these particular breeds that are purebred. And and same with dogs, like hip dysplasia. If you, you know, stay with one particular breed, you are pr more prone to that, especially in bigger dogs. So there's a lot of lot of reasons why I like that, like um, mixed breeds. One, two, if you know I have Jersey crosses, I like it because the hide, the skin is a lot thicker than a Jersey. We're in Northern Alberta, Canada, so we see minus 52 degrees Celsius here. It is frigid. It is cold, and winters are nasty. So I don't have on my on my acreage, it's not set up where I can just put my cows in a barn out of the cold. They're in the cold. They they have a windbreak. They have a shelter, a three-sided shelter, but I can't take them 100% away. So I need them to be hardy. And a purebred jersey does not do well in our environment. So, but I do like the strain of the jersey, the, the, the milking strain, but I like to couple that, let's say, with a Dexter, let's say with a low line or a Highland. Let's say I want to, you know, get a beef breed in there, more, more of a beef breed in there, like an Angus. Crossing them, yes, your yield of milk isn't as great, but it's still good. And most people can't manage four or six gallons of milk a day. You suddenly are swimming in dairy. I mean, suddenly you just have this overload where literally you can fill your bathtub and you might as well take this, you know, really expensive bath to rejuvenate your skin in milk because you don't know what to do with it. So having crosses also brings down the production, but you create a hardier cow and create less problems. I, it, I've been having my cows for five years and knock on wood, I have never had a calving issue. So having, being able to find a good mix 
that's the, definitely one of the first things I would look for. I would run away from any pure breads. And it can be, you know, a couple of different milk cow breeds mixed together. It can be a milk cow breed and a beef breed mixed together. That's just fine. Just note, what are your specific requirements? Are you wanting like four to six gallons of milk a day? Or will one to two gallons of milk a day be just fine? One of my milk cows only produce a gallon a day. And you know what? Even a gallon a day, I'm still making a block of cheese that is 3.9 pounds two blocks actually of those per week. I am making some cottage cheese. I am making at least three gallons into yogurt per week. We don't have enough just with her on board to have let's say drinking milk or if I want to do make junket which my family absolutely loves or if I want to do like a sour cream or butter. So but I'm also putting most of it into cheese. So you've got to figure out do I want, am I willing to make um, hard cheeses Do I, or do I just want enough for drinking and a little bit of yogurt? What are your family needs and what do you want to do with it? For me, one gallon a day is not quite enough, but for let's say somebody else, a gallon a day is plenty and you can do plenty with it. So with her, she's actually um, has Angus in her. She has, I would say she's, she's a quarter Angus. She is half, um, Dexter, and then I would say a quarter Jersey. And so, yes, she doesn't produce like a Jersey, but you know what? She is an awesome mom and an awesome producer, and I never have any medical or any issues with her. So you need to decide there, and that goes really with breed. You know, if you want to go half and half, half Jersey, half beef, then you're probably going to get a better milk. It's not a, just a streamlined, dry and cut issue, but what I do suggest is that you look for at least half and half, and you will have a fantastic milk cow. Another really strong point that I want to emphasize so much is to get your milk cow young. Do, in my opinion, do not buy an older, already broken milk cow. Now, some people be like, whoa, lady, what are you talking about? Wouldn't that be a good thing? Somebody already broke the cow in. It's already milk, been, been used to milking. That should be great. I belong to several um, Facebook communities that just have the topic of milking and daily, at least daily, there is a post of somebody crying about, well, we just brought a brand new milk cow home. She's about three to four years. She's going to calf out in a couple of days. She won't let us touch her. Or we had her for about a week and she has calved and now she has too much milk in her udder and she won't let us touch her. Suddenly, then your cow has mastitis. Suddenly, if you need to pull a calf, you can't because she doesn't trust you. There is lots of reasons for not buying an older milk cow right off the bat. My grandma gave me one really good sound advice and she told me that whenever you buy a cow, it will take an entire, a full year for that cow to be a hundred percent comfortable with you. Now there's always exceptions to the rule, but this is on average. Now you might think, wow, a whole, whole year. And, and you will see when you bring your cow home and you wait and you work with that cow for an entire year, how much and their attitude changes, how much they feel more comfortable around you. And you have that trust issue. When you just bring a cow home and they don't know you, and and then you expect that they should just perform for you and hey let's just go milk they're used to this and they kick you basically then what happens is you're like well I can't deal with this cow I'm just gonna sell her and then her life gets you know pushed from one owner to another owner to another owner when really it's us being the ones that are pushy and not them we're the impatient ones and what we have to, what what I've learned to realize is that working with animals takes time. 
you need to build that trust. So if you buy a calf that is around that five or six months mark, that is that's a good time to buy because they've had lots of time with mom. I personally look for calves that have not been bottle fed with formula. They can be bottle fed with mom's milk, not a problem, just not formula. And for me, when you are given something that is man-made, it's just never as good as mom's milk. So what's ideal? is to have patience and look for a calf around that five to six month mark. It doesn't necessarily have to be halter trained at this point, but if you can find a calf that's already halter trained, that's one more step that you don't have to do. What this does is you build relationship. So I don't breed until they're two years old. Some people say 14 months you can breed them. I prefer them to be two years. That way they are fully grown into themselves. They're mature and they are cycling regularly. Cows cycle around 21 days on average. So they're cycling ready and they're ready to have a calf. Take that year and a half time after you bought and build a relationship with your new milk cow. Love her, pet her, walk her. You know, if she's not halter broken, halter break her and walk her daily in her cage on a lead. Treat her, basically smother her, dote on her. Everything that you can do to build that relationship. Um, that way when she's ready to calve, you know, you can touch her calves on average right away. You can bring her into the barn. You can bring her to the stanchion if you need to milk the first little bit because she's produced too much milk for with the calf so you prevent mastitis. You can just be there and work with her without being scared of being charged and kicked. That was my biggest mistake that I made. I thought buying an older milk cow would be better and I bought cinnamon and she is a Dexter and it took me two months to build to get her into the stanchion and then when I got her into the stanchion and started milking the trust wasn't there quite yet and she kicked me in the chest she kicked me right here and I flew back what I didn't realize is that she was in heat as well at the same time so I was working with already a nervous cow now she's in heat and she kicked me not because she wanted to hurt me but because she didn't want me to steal her milk and the cows depends on the cow they can get really crabby when they're in heat and so I was kicked I actually fractured a um, rib right here and thank god she didn't kill me the doctors were actually shocked that they didn't, uh, she didn't puncture my lung. Um, I took me over nine months to recover. I still milked her. I still went out the next day to milk her um, in pain. I, it took a long time to heal up, but then you're leery, right, of each other. Or get a young calf, work with them, work with them, bring them up, and be patient. Don't be patient to get that milk. It's worthwhile to have a very tame and having that trusting relationship. The other thing is it's so important to have a halter broke cow. And lots of people will tell you that it's not that important. You just have a bucket of oats and they'll come. But you know what? There are times where a bucket of oats just they don't want to come. And cows can be stubborn. Something like kids. They'll come, you know, 20 times. And then one time you call them, they don't want to come. So they all you know cows have their own little attitudes i love them to pieces but they can be stubborn and you need to be able to lead them where you want them to go and not where they want to go you're the one in charge not them and that's really really important i live on a very small acreage 10 acres actually to be exact and when we need to move from one paddock to another, we like to have them, um, we like to halter them up and walk them over. They need to be calm. They need to be able to know that, hey, I'm the boss. 
I'm leading you, we're heading down here. And that goes as far as your milk cows, but that also goes, in my opinion, as far as your bulls. My bull that I have, he's halter broke. We got him at the bare minimum age of weaning of four months, so we could work with him, and so he could be halter broke. And now, four years later, he's handsome, muscular, just absolutely a gentle giant because we have worked with him since he's been a young young calf we've doted all over him we can hug him we can just walk up to him you'll see my 13 year old there she can walk up clip him with on his halter walk him around without being scared of him you know bolting he is just he has manners and that's what you want that's what you want and yes he's an intact bull and he does not show aggression so you want them halter broken you want to have them worked with work with your bull work with your cows the other thing is just on a side note I told you I wasn't going to go off but this is kind of important just to have in your mental mind is that cows are social they should never ever be alone Never, ever, even if you want to bring in another animal to keep them company, but they should never, ever be alone. And I do strongly believe that's why people's bulls get aggressive, is they're locked up by themselves. Never, ever have your bulls by themselves. When we have our bull locked up, when away from the girls, I have a, a intact billy goat that's his best friend. They've been raised together from... Um, when the when the billy goat was a kid and when he was a calf they've been raised and they snuggle to with each other they lick each other but they also bonk heads so that billy goat has these beautiful handsome horns and he's ready to give our our bull jack what what he wants our bull takes that aggression out on the billy goat instead of us so when we go in the cage everything stays calm he doesn't feel like that we need to be a big play toy um, where he respects us but he knows that hey if I want to play rough I just go to my buddy and we play rough and that keeps him very very tame okay getting back to halter being halter broken so have your cows halter broken I believe that is critical and a must on on to that you know what you need to be willing to put in the work to work with your new milk cow get her trained in that stanchion treat her we treat with oats we treat with apples we treat with um, grass we treat them with a ton of different variety of foods that we bring them into the stanchion some of her favorites are apples and carrots um, and so we we bring her in get her used to that stanchion before she calves after she calves and you want to milk her you're still gonna have to bring her in and get her used to that stanchion you need to be able to do you need to be able to have the patience Clover that you see here coming into the stanchion, she wasn't like that. When she calved out, she kicked. You know, we had her in, in the stanchion. As we were touching her teats, she would fling her legs out and kick. It took about two weeks to really get her confident um, in that stanchion after she had her calf. Bringing her in before that definitely got her used to it, but but... Cows are different once they had their calves. Their motherly instinct kicks in and you have to be able to recognize that, hey, it's not that they don't like you, it's that you're stealing their milk and she has a calf and now she's a mom. And you gotta understand that she's gonna throw a cow tantrum at first. Some cows may not, but it doesn't last. As long as you keep the routine the same, she'll get used to the routine and cows, really really thrive on routine so if you want to milk at six in the morning keep it at six in the morning if you want to milk at eight in the morning keep it at eight in the morning they will be waiting for you they love routine and so when you're trying something new they don't want to come they don't know what's going on and so you need to show them and do it again and again and then they will learn and that's the key so many people just give up Oh, my cow's kicking. My cow's throwing this tantrum. She doesn't like it. You know what? 
bring her in love her talk to her sweet talk her give her treats some cows take longer than others to get used to it but it's when usually we give up then the cows like hey if I just throw a tantrum I can get back out and no big deal so you need to be having them halt or broke so you can lead them into the stanchion at first get them used to it it's so important the other thing is if they're not halt or broke you know on our small acreage if I want to open up fences and I got nowhere to put them I can definitely have them tied somewhere to prevent them from running out of the fencing so having that ability to tether them to move them to bring them where you want to have that control is super important when you're working with your cows especially on a small farm where you're working directly with them and they're not just in a herd environment where you're just running them through a chute you are working with them individually and it's super important to have them halter broke now you can get really technical here some people get so technical on the distance where the teats are um, how the udder is placed a whole bunch of things even to go as far as where the teats are placed on the bull um, does it symbolize that that's a good milk breed stuff like that and in all honesty I don't even worry about it that's that's just my truth I don't even bother what I do bother with is that I have some good breeds some what is the calves mom look like how is she being milked is she being milked how much milk does she produce what's her personality how's her calving um, and same with the bull how's his personality how big is he has he shown tons of aggression or is he pretty pretty relaxed it all comes down to that but it all comes down to the the owner actually what have they done in working with their animals as well because you can have great genetic lines but if you're not working with your animals they're not going to be super friendly and their personality may be different and and subject to the way that they're also being handled so I really look for this so when I bought a niece now she is now let's see her she's born in April so April May June July August September October so she is now seven months old I bought her when she was five months old and when I was looking for a niece I was looking for breed and she is half Angus and half Jersey so her mom is three-quarters Jersey and her dad was Angus so half and half that's close enough so I was looking for a breed that was mixed so I was really satisfied with that but I was what what really caught my attention one she's super cute two she was already halter broke so what they did because actually Anissa's mom produces 13 gallon third sorry Anissa's mom produces 13 liters of milk per day they ended up having they ended up just bottle feeding her using mom's milk so that was a huge criteria that I was looking for I didn't want a formula fed calf okay she's not feeding directly off of mom but she's getting mom's milk through the bottle so that that is no problem that actually tames her down and so she was super tame super healthy already halter broken and let me stress so tame that even my two-year-old at that time could run up to her and pet her so all those boxes were ticked for me so I did purchase a niece and I'm purchasing her to replace my first milk cow cinnamon and I'm totally devastated that I have to replace my very first milk cow because I love cinnamon I love her to pieces but the fact is is that I bought her at four years old which was a mistake I she's not halter broken which is a mistake and I can't halter break her she will literally plow me down if I put anything on her head um, she was she's stubborn she's kind of stuck in her way so now she is refusing to go into the stanchion so 
For three years I've been milking her and this year she refuses to go into any of the stanchions because she doesn't want to. Even if I take her calf, entire calf, in the barn beside the stanchion, she still won't go. So we're starting to have issues with her and that means I can't clip her hooves, I can't milk her if she has problems with her calf, I can't milk her at all to get milk off of her and so she's become really stubborn it doesn't matter if I'm giving her oats if I treat her with alfalfa if I try to give her apples or carrots or anything like that she still will not go into the stanchion and so I have no choice but to replace her and so it just it just saddens me so much because I put so much work into training her, building that trust with her. And she's fine as long as I'm not essential. I can pet her, I can hug her, but she will not go. And I will not milk a cow that they're not in the stanchion because I've been kicked once and I do not want that to happen again. And it's just so much safer when they are in the stanchion, they can't back out. And plus we have a kickboard set up so there's no spilling the milk. There's none of their hooves going into the milk bucket. I don't have to be worried about them kicking me. I have a, a kick proof stanchion with a kickboard and it is amazing. You put some hobbles on, that's just to make sure that they can't lift up their foot high enough to get over my kickboard but they can't, you know, kick at my milking um, pail, which is absolutely fantastic. So we are actually going to put her in the freezer this year, which is really devastating. But a lot, sometimes on the farm, you have to make tough choices. You have to do what's right even if it means losing your milk cow <sighs> that you've worked incredibly hard at building a relationship with so um sorry you guys she just means a lot to me she she really does but i also know that we need to be able to work with our critters we need to be able to work with our animals 100% and I need to be able to give them the care that they need and I need to do that safely in a safe environment and so we will we will put her down this year and put her in the freezer and I am raising a niece to take her place so I'm working with a niece to take her place so that way we will have a niece as our primary milk cow, Clover that you saw there coming into the stanchion. She's also one of our primary milk cows. And then we have a low line that I don't know how she'll milk, but she is to calve out this year and we'll see how her udder is. I don't expect her to be this great milk cow, um, but she is more of a beef breed for us. So, but I do want her still trained as a trained in the stanchion so if I do need to milk her or help her out their udder I can. So let's just wrap this up really really quickly. What should you look for? Breed. I get a mixed breed. Get a mixed breed um, cow. Purchase them young. Work with them. Work with them and work with them. Build that trust get them halter broken either from the previous owner or you spending the time to halter break them get them halter broke it is so incredibly important and the other thing is is to really check on the attitudes and the strain that you're getting so look at the mom look at the dad get pictures go there and see them chat with the farmer look how he or she works with her cows it'll give you a better understanding of how your calf that you will potentially buy from them will have been treated and that is really important as well if you cover those areas you've got a fantastic start and you need to just put in that time 
to work with them and to train them at the end of the day it's up to you to do that and that's what differs from somebody who just who wants the milk but have it already done for them and don't want to put in that effort to train them and just expect somebody else to train them and then when they buy an older milk cow and it doesn't work for the first week they just go ahead and sell it because they aren't ready to put in that work if you start from young you'll start building that trust you'll start understanding the temperament better and the personality of every particular calf or potential milk cow that you are working with and then you know how to work with each individual on an individual basis and you will have that trust and they will be a whole lot easier to train because they trust you and there's nothing more than I can stress so much about that trusting relationship between you and your cow and if you cover those four things you are going to have a fantastic start and after that all the fine details will fall in like building a stanchion and I will be making a video on how to get that stanchion that I have built with that kickboard in place. It is critically important in my opinion. It has saved my life and I don't have to worry about my kids milking and being kicked or the bucket of milk being spilled. I hope this definitely helps you choose your family milk cow. Thank you so much for watching and dote all over your cows and I will see you on the next video.